Hello everyone, welcome back to Tish's GT Sport Driving School. It is back! We are back with some more information which will hopefully help you guys uh, be better racers uh, in Daily Race C or the FIA races where tyre wear is significant. Because of course, it is all about tyre wear. Now, there are several areas to look at when we look at tyre wear. And I've done some tests for you just to show you some examples of how changing little bits here and there can actually have a significant impact on your tyre wear. Now, there's going to be three main areas we're going to look at here. That's brake balance, which we've talked about in many other episodes. Uh, braking, again, we've had the braking episode in the past, and accelerating. They're the three key areas where you can improve the most with your tyre wear. Now, there is understeer and oversteer, but they're all about, about braking, accelerating, and also a bit of the brake balance as well. So, understeer, obviously, does cause tyre wear, but it's a part of those other aspects. Brake balance, braking, accelerating. Now, one thing that doesn't affect tyre wear, and this is kind of significant, is apex speed. And, like, how much load you're putting on those tyres. So, if you're doing no inputs, you're not accelerating or braking. And say you go around 150 miles an hour corner at 50 miles an hour, and you go around one at 100 miles an hour. You know, same corner. You're not going to see any real change in tyre wear. Or certainly, I haven't seen it. Other players have not seen this. So, apex speed does not determine tyre wear. As I said just before... Understeer does. So if you went round the 150 miles an hour corner and you're understeering, you're doing this, and the front tyres are basically just skipping along that, that will cause tyre wear. If you're oversteering, obviously, we've seen oversteering, smoking tyres causes tyre wear. We know this. So just keep that in mind when you are racing. Now, as I say, I've done some tests for you uh, just to show you on screen, show you the impacts of doing certain things. Uh, for example, brake balance, changing brake balance. Um, and uh, we've done that at Lego Majore. Now, I was going to originally do it at Blooming in Field A, and I did do it at Blooming in Field A, but it, because it's so sweeping, it didn't actually have um, as much of an impact that I wanted to show you. It, the same results apply at both tracks, I've checked. Um, but at Lego Majore Center, you can see it more because we have the hard braking into turn one, we have the hard braking into the last corner. So we can definitely see the brake in there. So that's what the track we're going to use. We're going to do four laps basically on each of the settings we're going to do and I can compare them both I can talk you through why there's differences uh, in each of them uh, and just generally potentially what you could do to then improve your tyre wear to maybe go that extra lap, extra two laps uh, in a given race because of course tyre wear races uh, have been significant, uh, they still are I mean I still remember Firestorm at Nürburgring recently doing a one stop, a very early one stop by making the tyres on the Jaguar last a very long time using some of the techniques we're going to talk about. So without further ado, let's stop talking and looking at me. Let's jump to the first test. So one thing I forgot to mention, of course, was that we're using Times 50 tyre wear to really show the extremes of tyre wear here and how brake balance really does impact on those tyres. We're also in the Audi R8 Group 3, of course, because that's the car I'm most used to. So hopefully I can drive it the most consistent and therefore give you the most accurate results as possible. Now, top left, you can see it's plus five brake balance, which means all the braking is uh, focused on the rear. Zero is more towards the middle, and minus five is obviously way towards the front, so the front wheels will be doing more of the work. Now, in theory, this should mean minus five, we have more tire wear on the front. Zero should be what the car normally does, and plus five, more rear tire wear, so the rear's being used a lot. Now, we've just stopped it at the line here. Is there any difference? You can't really tell after that opening lap. Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to stop it at the end of the each lap. We'll fast forward the next few laps, uh, just so that, obviously, you know what a lap of Lego Majore Centre is like. Um, and uh, we'll fast forward, and we'll see how the tyre wear impacts at the end of each and every lap. So let's fast forward the next one now. So speeding along at 200% this time, we're going to whiz around this Majore Centre circuit. As I mentioned before, we're using this circuit because it's got two heavy braking zones. I don't want the tyre wear affected by any slight oversteer or any slight understeer. Braking zones only. Let's see the actual impact of this brake balance. Now, as we head towards the line this time, you are now going to see that plus five actually has significantly more tyre wear on the rear. Oh, look, it's what we already knew. And obviously, if you look on the comparison between the fronts, between plus five and minus five, you can see that minus five has actually used more of the fronts. And you are probably noticing as well that 
the plus five is always the last video to finish. That's because obviously the car is struggling. There's a little bit more rotation in there. Brake is becoming a bit more efficient because the tires have less grip. So you started to see an impact here of using plus five versus minus five uh, versus zero, which is obviously the middle ground. Let's fast forward again, uh, another lap, and let's actually see what the tires look like at the end of the third lap. As we speed along now on this third lap, what you're going to notice now is the plus five and the zero, the rear is going to start getting sketchy. And as we've talked about in a previous episode, when the brake balance is more towards the rear, you're going to have issues with oversteer. And we know oversteer causes tire wear anyway. So this tire wear is going to exponentially increase because less grip on the rear, the more it slides, the more tire wear you have. So it constantly increases. So as we've already got to the line already, that was blooming fast. You can see now, especially with the plus five and the minus five, the rear tires have taken an absolute pounding. And likewise with the front tires, you can see the minus five, the front tires have taken a pounding. So they're taking more of the load compared to the rear tires. Zero being about the middle there. So it's got a bit better on the rears compared to the plus five, but a bit better on the fronts compared to the minus five. So it averages out a little bit. Now we're going to do one more lap. And then we're going to do an actual comparison, really focusing on those tire wear markers and really see the difference between all three of the brake balances. So let's speed along on this final lap now. And you're going to see the top left one have an absolute tail happy lap. Let's put it that way. Uh, top right with a zero does get a little bit tail happy. And obviously at the bottom, we're still doing fairly okay in the grand scheme of it. I know we're going at 200%, but you've already seen a lap of Majora Center once. You don't need to see lap after lap after lap after lap. Anyway, we get towards the line, finally for the top left one, obviously, because it's had a bit of a mare of a lap, and you can really see those tyre differences. Look at that left rear tyre in the top left-hand corner. There's hardly any of it left. And then look at top right, there's like mm, a quarter-ish. And then bottom, there's probably what, like 35, 40%. So instantly you can see the massive differences here amongst all the tyres. And that is the impact of brake balance. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to just zoom in on all of these uh, tyre markers so you can just get a bit of a better understanding. Just looking at this now, you can really see the pounding that rear left tyre took there. Going from minus 5 to plus 5, obviously that's what the dial is in the game. So maybe you want to judge this accordingly, uh, depending on your car, of course. Uh, but look at that left rear tyre. It's around 40%, I would say, on the minus 5. It's around 25%, I'd say, probably, on the 0. And then it's, what, around 10%, even under 10% there on the plus 5. So you can imagine the next lap being an absolute killer uh, for this car on the plus 5. The minus 5, it probably could survive another lap, uh, or even two laps. The 0, probably only one lap before it gets down to that plus 5 area. Remember, this is on times 50, of course, so it is going to be very extreme in this situation. It we have the same story on the front tyres, but remember, the fronts is more about understeer and trying to get around the corner. So, minus five, the fronts have taken the worst of the pounding, whereas the plus five, the fronts look fairly okay. I mean, that front right on the plus five, happy days. I mean, that's done basically 200 laps because they're on times 50. It looks like you could do a 1,000, so... You know, depending on the car you drive, obviously front-wheel drive, you would have a different experience. Four-wheel drive, same situation, you'd have a different experience. This is in an MR car, which obviously the weight is over the rear wheels as well. Therefore, you will get a bit more tyre wear included. So, that's how brake balance affects tyre wear. You can see that clear as day with that image. Let's now jump to how braking inputs actually affect the tyre wear. So here we go with some half braking. Now, bottom left hand side, you can see a big 100% above some tyres and actual brake pressure. Now, this is the 100% run with zero brake balance that you have just seen when we were comparing brake balances. What we're going to show on the main screen, which is the official run, is actually around about 50% braking. Now, you're going to have to bear with me in terms of the 50% braking because obviously, if you practice a lot at a combo, you'll be able to get this exactly precise bang on and absolutely nail your tire wear um, saving. But here you can see I'm just, I was just above there 50% and then dropped it down towards 50%. Uh, and what I'll do at the end of each lap is I'm actually just gonna match up uh, where those laps are just to make sure they're even. Because obviously if you break less or break at 50% rather than 100%, you have to break earlier and therefore the lap's gonna be slightly slower. Now, the, this is the compromise for saving your tires, slower lap times. Uh, and you can already see in the bottom left hand side that the left rear tire is starting to take a hit on the 100% one. 
And as we come towards this break-in zone again, you're going to see the 100% break-in. And uh, I, I do trail break into these corners as well, remember. But as we head towards the line now, look at that bottom left. Uh, re the rear left tyre, sorry. It is gone. It's been hit hard on that 100% break-in. And we actually have a fair amount of tyre left already on this run as we're in the third lap now. And this will mean that the car is a bit more stable. And what I found while obviously putting these laps together is actually the laps start to close up. There's a crossover point, and we often see this in the racing as well. And suddenly, saving tyres actually becomes worthwhile. Because remember, if it's a one-stop, but you're really edgy on tyres, you may have to start this tyre saving just to make sure you have a faster speed at the end of the race than being all over the place, slidey, and, you know, potentially causing a crash. So we're just getting to the end of this stint now um, as we sped this footage up a little bit. Uh, and you can clearly see the difference in the bottom left-hand side. I don't need to really explain any more than that. But the 50% break-in, obviously far better than the 100% break-in. And it all is to do with that brake pressure. As I said, braking in this game is the most significant part of tyre wear. And you've seen it right there. We've seen that difference with brake balance alone. This is with 50% braking. And look at the difference. It is massive. And what I will do uh, in a second is actually show you the difference, like zoomed in. So just so you get a good idea here, because the 50%, we're around 50% tire wear. Whereas on the 100%, I think we're around 25%. As you can see there now, look, look at that. That's, that's kind of crazy to me, if I'm honest. That is a huge difference. And that sort of difference can really benefit you in a race. And we've seen this... Already in the FIA seasons, we saw Koke do it one time at a Le Mans race. Uh, we've seen Firestorm recently do it with the Jaguar F-Type pitting really early uh, and then staying out and just managing those tyres, doing that 80%, 70% braking to save the tyres. And, you know, on the screen now, you can clearly see left inside 100%, right inside 50% braking. It's just a no-brainer, really. If you want to try and save tyres, just lower that brake threshold. Now, imagine if I was on minus five. I imagine the right side tyres would be looking pretty sharp at the moment. And in that situation, uh, bearing in mind we did four laps there, four times 50 is 200 laps. That's a hell of a lot of laps to do uh, at a circuit. So we've now looked at braking in a huge nutshell because, as I say, braking is the most significant part of tyre wear in this game. Uh, we've looked at brake balance and also brake pressure in terms of you know, breaking a little bit less on, uh, you know, 50% actually helps save tyres. Uh, what we're going to do now is actually look at acceleration um, because you may see me when I drive, at least. Uh, I actually change my acceleration if I'm trying to save tyres. So let's jump to that now. So here we are at Special Stage Route X and we're going to do something that you already know the result of, basically. We're going to do some standing starts. Now, we're only going to do this once, which is why I've paused the video. So top left is going to be a full-on flat-out start, okay? We're just going to keep it in first gear, in, hitting that limiter, wheel spin and all, until we get to the appropriate speed, then change gear. Uh, and then top right side is all the tyres for that top left image. Down in the bottom right hand side, we're going to do a more controlled start. So half throttle controlling that throttle, building the revs up, up to 100% and then changing gear, of course, when we need to change gear with the tyres uh, just zoomed in, magnified in that bottom left hand side. As I say, you already know the result of this, but the reason I'm showing this is because uh, you can see wheel spin in its like purest form here. But uh, when accelerating out of a corner, there is still some wheel spin. So if you ever put trash control on, you will start seeing it flash constantly. And that's trash control controlling the wheel spin. Now, if you just get that in like microscopic uh, seconds or milliseconds, uh, you're not really going to feel it in the wheel. And if you've not got trash control on, obviously that's just going to cause the tires to spin up a little bit. And then they'll just grip and carry on. Now that causes tire wear. So let's have a look at this standing start first of all, and then we're going to jump back to Lego Majore Center, and we're actually going to do some interesting accelerations out of corners using different gears, uh, just to show the, or demonstrate the fact that, you know, first gear hitting the limiter potentially could cause more tire wear than doing a controlled acceleration out of a corner where you might use second. Uh, so let's start this grid start now, just to prove this exercise, uh, and then we'll go to Majore Center. So focus on that top left hand side, Look at that limiter being hit. The wheel spins there. Look at the right hand side. Top right. Tire wear has been absolutely nuked. 
bottom, you can see we had a more controlled start there. We're just going to go to the 1,000 meters and stop it there. You can actually see that tire wear was still being impacted, even though we'd already left the grid at that point, or left the start line, and was already accelerating away around 500 meters, 600 meters. That's because the car is still pushing the rear tires into the ground. It's a rear-wheel drive car, a lot of weight of those rear wheels. Tire wear is impacted because of that. You know, they're trying to get the grip. Now, why am I showing you this? Because you already know the answer. Well, think of exiting a corner. So Lego Majore Center, the hairpin, you're leaving that, well, we've been leaving that in second gear. What we're going to do in a second is actually leave it in first gear to show you the impact of that. Because obviously, higher revs can cause higher wheel spin. If you don't control that throttle or acceleration, you could have what we've just demonstrated here, top right, a lot more tire wear. So what we're going to do now is going to jump to Lego Majore Center. We're going to do exactly what we did with the 50% braking, but show that with the different gears that we're going to use. We're basically going to use first gear out the hairpins rather than second gear because we were controlling the braking at the time to demonstrate the braking side of it. Now it's all about controlling that acceleration. So here we go with our final run at Lego Majore Center. And uh, bottom left hand side, as we did with the brake pressure one, is the normal run on zero brake balance. Um, so we're expecting those tyres to be better in this situation, not worse. Uh, and then front and centre is going to be the full lap of using first gear at the hairpins. Uh, just to give you an idea of what is uh, going to happen, we're just going to do a normal lap here, then we're going to speed up the video footage. Now, as I say, first gear, we're expecting to be similar to the grid start. It's a very slow corner. As we accelerate out in first gear, the rear's going to get some like microscopic movements in there because obviously we're putting a lot of power down there. There's not a lot of downforce happening because it's the slower speed. So there should be more tire wear in theory. So we cross that line now and off we go on our run. Now, in these first couple of laps, we're expecting this lap to actually be quicker because if we're using first gear, we get a little bit more engine braking. I didn't use first gear previously because I'd want, I didn't want to have the acceleration have an impact here. It was all about braking. This situation, it's all about accelerating. So going around here now. Tire wear looking a bit worse for wear already with this first gear run. See, it just stops there for a second. That's us just rematching the tires as well. And already you can see the first gear run has more tire wear than the second gear run, which is the normal run we've been doing. So already you can see that using second gear, uh, while it's a tiny bit slower it's actually saving us a lot more tires than using first gear i mean look at look at the tire difference now this is massive at this moment in time this is massive we're now equaling already the second gear run and the second gear run is now going to have a much better final lap because of better tire wear look at the tires look at that rear left tire from using first gear as we approach the last corner all sorts of oversteer now because the tire is completely gone you don't, I don't need to say anything more there. Um, there's really no need for me to actually even do a comparison here, but I will put one up in a second just to show you <laughs> my point in question. Uh, but literally, first gear, more aggressive, it, it forces more tires. It forces more use of the tires because you have those microscopic movements um, as you exit a corner because you're putting the power down. There's not a lot of downforce there, so it's not pushing the rear down. So you, the rear might get a little bit loose and then catch itself. Whereas in second gear, not all the power's going down because you're in a different area with the power band. Therefore, the tires aren't spinning themselves up. Therefore, less tire wear. Therefore, you keep your tires for longer. I know this is extreme with the times 50 tire wear, but it's all to demonstrate a purpose here that you can control tire wear in many different ways. You can control it via braking, you can control it via brake balance, and you can control it via accelerating. Now, if you put all the savings that I did in there, 50% braking, using second gear, and maybe using minus five, you could probably save an absolute enormous amount of tires um, using this times 50. Just think about that because even just his first gear run, you can see a massive difference. In fact, let me get that comparison up now for you. And here we have the final results. So obviously, the left rear tyre absolutely destroyed. We know that. We saw that. And that was actually caused as well. Um, it effectively caused the drift on the last corner on the last lap, but also then caused more wear because of it. So literally, this is where I've been arguing for a while, that spin. Uh, you get double penalised because then you get huge tyre wear with these multipliers. But even so, the front right look pretty much identical. Front left, a little bit more wear. That could be to do with that drift at the end where the, the rear just lost itself. Uh, and then obviously the rears we know are destroyed. And this is literally it for the driving school. Tire wear, how to save tires. We've talked about brake balance. Uh, depending on the car, it will depend on where you want to put the brake balance, of course. For example, a front wheel drive car, you shove that brake balance to the rear 
and make sure you try and save those fronts as much as you can. Uh, front engine rear wheel drive car, you then have to start judging it a little bit more. Is the rear sliding too much? Then you want to go forward. Is there too much weight? Is there too much happening with the front tires? Do you then have to go back a little bit? All wheel drive cars, same principle. Where is this weight moving to? And if you can work out all this stuff, um, you can then adjust the brake balance accordingly. You then might want to then adjust your brake pressure. Do 50%, try and save those tires a little bit more, which we, you've seen actually helps quite a lot. And then you might go, okay, maybe accelerating out of corners, I can go in second gear rather than first. I may lose a tenth over a lap, but that actually saves me a lot of time in the long run. Then you do what we've done here, and as demonstrated on the screen in front of you, you save a lot of tyres that way as well. And remember, these FIA races, they're designed to be on the literal peak of one, two-stop strategies. So potentially you can make a one-stop work by just saving those tyres a little bit more. As I say, I hope you enjoyed this video. It's been a really good driving school to make, really interesting to make. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I'm glad I've made this one. There'll be more driving school episodes very soon. But that's going to be it for me for now, guys. Thanks very much for watching. I will see you in the next video.